What's up, comic loving cringe babies? It's your boy. Today I'm gonna be reviewing the Mask uh, Omnibus Volume One comics. If you've seen the Jim Carrey movie, they're based off this. And um, before we start, just like to say my birthday was a couple days ago, so happy birthday to me! I make a birthday video every year. It's all. Uh, pretty much never on my actual birthday, but I do make one, so I just thought I'd mention that. Anyway, The Mask. Basically, if you've seen the Jim Carrey, you know, you know the Jim Carrey movie, you know that the main character is Stanley Ibkiss. In this book, I'd say that the main character is more Stanley Ibkiss's wife, because in The Mask comics, Stanley Ibkiss is married at the beginning of the book, and... He's getting, it, it's just like his wife or girlfriend. I don't remember if it's ever actually clarified, but he gets with this mask from like a thrift shop as a present to make up for something. Cause I, I don't remember what it was, but he had like uh, forgotten their anniversary or something. It was something like that. And she ended up liking it. And then later on he discovers that the mask can turn him invincible and he can pull things out of nowhere. So he, starts making lists of all the people that have ever wronged him and then he goes around murdering all of them and at first you kind of agree with him because some of them are like um there's a biker gang that like beat him up earlier that day for no reason or like mechanics that are purposefully breaking something in his car every time he comes in and gets something fixed with that he has to recurrently come back like Obviously, you may not agree with murdering the mechanics in that situation, but obviously, like, you understand his motives. But then things start getting a little more lucrative in terms of his morals whenever he goes back and kills his old elementary school teacher because she embarrassed him one time when he was a kid. And then after a while, like, the cops start discovering all these murders and... They come after him, and he just starts slaughtering all these cops. I'm pretty sure, like, 11 of them die. Before Stanley Ibkiss eventually takes off the mask when he gets back to his apartment, and then his girlfriend puts on the mask and then pulls the guns out of, no out of nowhere and then shoots him to death. Then she takes the mask to the police station, and she doesn't tell him what it does. She's just, like... This is connected to the big-headed guy you've been chasing. Don't don't anybody put it on. And the guy that's in charge of the big head case, uh, his name is Calloway. He's a great, great character, by the way. He ends up putting on the mask eventually. And the mask doesn't just give you invincibility and turn you green and get you, let you pull stuff out of nowhere, but it also kind of messes with your mind. And the way that it messes with your mind is a little bit different with each person. But with all all of them except one, they made, they made them more violent. So the mask, the thing about the mask is like, it goes through main characters through each part faster than Jojo. Because like each part goes fast. So like Calloway has the mask for a while and he uses it to kill a bunch of violent criminals because... He thinks that the police force is ineffective at stopping people because they have to follow so many regulations. And he is actually my favorite person that uses the mask because he actually, like, all the people that he killed definitely deserved it. Unlike Idkiss, who was killing cops and killing um, his elementary school teacher, which he did in front of a bunch of kids, by the way. Then, um, since the big head guy is back, that's what they call the person in the mask. They call him Big Head because he's got a big ass head and he's green, so... They're like, oh, they call him Big Head. Then Stanley's, Stanley Ibkiss' girlfriend, well, ex, because he's dead, ends up hearing about these mask reports, and she knows how the mask works, so she confronts him about it. And he's like, you know what? You're right. Because he ends up almost killing his best friend because the mask was, like, manipulating his mind. So he's like, this is, you're right. That Nobody should have this kind of power. So... They end up locking the mask inside of this box, and Calloway gets to keep the box, but she gets to keep the key. So, like, anytime he needs to use the mask for something, he has to contact her first to make sure it's absolutely necessary. Stuff like that. And, you know, hijinks and shoot, Sue, this is a pretty goofy series. Like, the, the mask 
it's kind of bound by fate to like be passed around from person to person after it corrupts them over time. Cause that's just like the nature of the mask. And there, there's like a lot of main characters in the series. Cause after someone loses their connection to the mask, they're not a main character anymore. Ibkis is your first main character and he's great, but he dies pretty fast. Then there's his girlfriend. His girl, his ex-girlfriend is probably my second favorite character. My favorite character is Calloway, the, the um, police detective, because I just really like how the mask just doesn't really manipulate him nearly as much as everyone else, just because he's so strong-willed with the law and stuff. Like, he wears it for way longer than everyone else, too. So, like, it does eventually get to him, but the fact that he just does the right thing and, like, always fighting evil, even when wearing the mask, is pretty sick. Um, Stanley Ibkiss' ex-girlfriend also wears the mask at one point, but she's terrible at using it. Like, so, there's um, a mob that has been... Okay, so, backtrack. The Calloway kills a bunch of people in the mob. They find out that uh, whenever... Here's the thing, though. He kills a bunch of people in the mob, and they know it's Calloway because he did something mess... He messed up or something on a job in the police force from an action that he did while he was in the mask. So in order to gain his reputation back with the police force, he goes into a hostage situation without the ma with the mask, but without wearing it, that puts it on to take care of the hostage situation and comes out looking like a hero. And um, because of that, the mob knows that he did that. So after he's... So he buried, after he almost kills his friend, he buries the mask in a, under cement in his basement. But the mob comes into his house trying to kill him for revenge. And he ends up getting the mask out right as they shoot him so he doesn't get to wear it. He do, that's not spoilers, though, because Calloway doesn't die from that. There, there are going to be probably some spoilers, but the, basically the mask gets passed around to the driver and he takes over the mob and then... That Stanley Ibkis' girlfriend actually infiltrates him and tricks him into taking the mask off. This big bulky guy that works for the mob tries to kill uh, his girlfriend because they think he thinks Big Head's all the same guy this whole time. And she just gets her ass beat the whole time because she, in order to take advantage of the mask's powers, you sort of have to let it mentally manipulate you in some ways. Other than the invincibility, you won't die while wearing the mask, but in order to like have super strength, things out of nowhere you need to let the mask manipulate in some way and she wasn't so like well she was doing it at a very low level because she was still pulling stuff out of nowhere but she was very weak in the mask because she wasn't trying to let it manipulate her and um it's just really cool if you like the art style is kind of really goofy sometimes there's a really good example of that i'll pull up uh, that if you like, um, cartoonishly goofy villains, then the mask is a good villain. The only thing, the only downside I'd say that this has is I don't really like it whenever they switch the main character so often. Like Stanley Ibkiss, for instance, that's kind of how goofy the art style can be sometimes. Stanley Ibkiss, I thought was a good character, but he died before he could really get fleshed out. The only characters that really get fleshed out are Calloway and uh, Stanley's ex-girlfriend. I can't remember her name. And, bef like, their dealings with the mask are kind of over. Uh, Calloway's dealings are never over with the mask because he's always chasing it. Because he loses it after the basement debacle. He ends up surviving getting shot. But he's in a coma for a while. But, like, the mask gets passed on to this guy that, like, was a huge fan of the guy of Big Head. And he thought he was super cool because he was basically unkillable. Because, like, when you're wearing a mask, you can't die. And he was going up against a bunch of police officers who he was always getting shot and exploded. And he would just live. And, like, then he'd just mow him down. And, like, stuff like that. It was crazy. So he ends up finding the mask. He has a group of, like, three friends and... They each use the mask for their own selfish gains. And I feel like that's the point where it kind of started to get goofy. Because with Calloway, you know, he's really wrestling with himself on his morals and stuff throughout the whole story. And the part where the mask, the guy that's a fan of Big Head gets the mask, it's sort of just like a goofy side story, sort of. That doesn't feel like it means a lot in the overarching plot. 
But there is one thing that's really important that happens in that arc. So the big bulky guy that uh, Ib Kiss's ex-girlfriend was fighting earlier that I was telling you about, that she got her ass beat by. He canonically is probably around like eight, eight foot five, and he's broad as shoulders as hell, and he could, he could kill anyone. He gets shot multiple times and he lives, and one punch could break your entire face from him. He could throw you like 30 feet if he wanted. He's just a really bulky buff guy, and he never says a word. Yeah, I really like how the how the artist draws facial expressions though, because you you could you know what this guy's like just from looking at him in certain scenes. But he wants the mask after he sees the powers that it has. This next part's spoilers, by the way, but um, it, so if you do want to read it, then I wouldn't suggest uh, listening to this last part. But that big buff guy, after the mask fan and all of his friends get a turn with the mask. The last one takes it off. He's like, oh, this is wrong. I finally found out what I was doing is wrong. You guys are right. The mask does corrupt you. He shows up right when he takes it off. And Callaway is there and his girlfriend and these four other guys. And they're, shit, they're shitting their pants right now because this guy could kill all of them if he wanted to. And he's about to get the power of the mask. So he puts on the mask and <laughs> his, he's so big, the mask doesn't fit on his face. So he can't actually wear it, which is crazy because not only does that not, here's the thing. He's already a really threatening villain, but it also makes him not too overpowered while also like, it, also another thing I like about him is you never know what's going on inside his head because when Cal, sorry, I, I referenced this a lot already, but when he kissed his ex-girlfriend was fighting him with the mask, eventually she's like he's trying to like rip her the mask off her face and like sh stretching her neck but she's not dying because she's wearing the mask and she's like i know you want the mask everyone that knows what the mask does wants the mask and she's like except me i can't take this thing so she takes it off and throws it on the ground she's just like take it and they're in a warehouse and there's fire everywhere and it's burning down and he's just staring at her he doesn't go to take it like you know he wants the mask why isn't he taking it like what's going on in this guy's head I think he's really well written like that. But um, the arc where the guy, the four guys get the mask that are just like high school dudes and one of them is a fan of the mask. Like, it's just kind of goofy. Like, for instance, the guy that's a fan of the mask, like, I don't even remember what he does because it was so unmemorable. He just goes around being stupid and then he does something he regrets and takes off the mask. But his friend after that wanted to be like a famous rock star musician and the mask could like manipulate him being better at guitar obviously because it's kind of like um it's kind of like a monkey's paw like that you know anything you want it can kind of get you to do to an extent its main powers are invincibility and like pulling stuff out of nowhere kind of like a pocket dimension or whatever but anyway it makes him really good at and also you can manipulate your voice and what you look like i forgot to mention that but um the weird thing about disguises, actually, let me just go off on a little tangent here. The weird thing about the disguises is they don't last very long. Uh, after a while, the skin will start peeling off, or if, like, something brushes against your face, then the skin will just rip off really easily. But, and, but you can change your voice, too, so you could totally think, mimic um, somebody else if you wanted to. So, to do that, he gets himself a really good voice, and he auditions for, like, um, playing in this auditorium. But whenever he gets to play in the auditorium, like the mask takes over and makes him sing the Four, Four Seasons songs instead of rock. And then everyone boos him off the stage. You see, that's the thing. That's one of the things I didn't really like because I, from what you've seen from the story so far, like the mask gets in your head, you know? And it's not just like a mysterious type of force. Like it actually talks to the characters sometimes while they're wearing it. And it does, it wants to be worn. Like sometimes it'll speak in your head to try to get you to put it on when you're not wearing it. So what I'm thinking is this guy wants to be a musician. He's using the mask to be a musician, but the mask purposely messes up his gig. And then he doesn't want to wear the mask anymore. What I'm thinking is why does the mask do that if he wants to be worn? And this all goes back to it affecting different people in different ways is what I think. Cause like, I think in order for the mask to want to be worn by a person, they have to be very strong-willed because the stronger the will, the more power the mask has. That's why Stanley Ibkiss' girlfriend um, 
is was like so not powerful using a mask. Like she has a strong will, but the only thing her strong will is directed toward is not being overpowered by the mask, which if the mask could corrupt that will, then be very powerful. Like how Stanley Ibkiss was very powerful because of a lot of uh, repressed anger that he had over people abusing him throughout the years or Calloway's like strong disdain for violent criminals and uh, drug dealers. But for some guy that just wants to be a musician and he's just kind of lazy, I feel like the mask maybe didn't want to be worn because of that, but it's because it's never explicitly stated, it does seem a bit uncharacteristic for the mask to purposely mess up his gig like that. There's one of the guys that's like a stoner and when he puts this, this is the weirdest one, honestly, the weirdest reaction to the mask. The mask has the power to make you invis invis invincible and pull stuff out of nowhere. And when this guy puts the mask on, he just is seeing like a fucking acid trip the whole time. And he doesn't even like, use the power for anything he just gets scared and takes it off after a while because he doesn't know what's happening and i'm just like that's that's the weirdest um interpretation of somebody putting the mask on that i've ever seen because when everybody else puts the mask on it never shows you what they see through their eyes you're kind of getting it from an omnipotent uh perspective the whole time so i'm thinking like is that just what he saw because he does drugs and he put the mask on or is that what everyone sees when they put the mask on? And that's why they're able to pull things out of nowhere. It's it's hard to explain what you mean unless you've seen like the exact pages and I don't want to take the time to flip to them, but then there's, but then it instantly takes like a corny turn whenever the comic book nerd puts it on. Like he's been the, the wise, smart one, this whole group that's like, guys, don't put on the mask because it makes you do evil things and it's obviously evil and stupid. So you don't put, you shouldn't put it on. And he's like, uh, this monarch butterfly will pack in approximately two weeks according to my hypothesis. And he says cringe, nerdy stuff like that. But then they're like, after everyone's gotten a taste of the mask and they're all like, this shit ass, you take it, uh, Cletus or whatever his name was. I'm gonna call him Cletus because he's such a little bitch, but it's like, you take it, Cletus. You knew it was wrong from the start. We all trust you. And then immediately after getting to him, like, uh, I actually am smarter than you guys. That's how I know I won't be manipulated by the mask when I put it on. So then, it, so then he immediately puts the mask on. He's like, I will use the power to become a superhero. And then the first thing he does after saying that is go over to the zoo and then try to stop people from stealing this lion's teeth after it just got like new golden teeth as like a publicity stunt or something for the zoo. Got them like golden teeth or something. After it got its teeth knocked out in the wild or something, but these mobsters are trying to steal the teeth made out of gold. So he stops them and he's like, Ugh, I'm so good at this thing. Uh, I should get some sidekicks. And then, and then he, uh, he lets a bunch of animals escape from the zoo and puts costumes on them. And he's like, all right, my sidekicks, let's go fight crime. And they're all fucking animals. So they just leave. And I'm like, dude, what happened? This guy was smart. The mask corrupts your like mind, but that fast? And it makes him stupid instead of evil. Like, <laughs> okay, buddy. It's just, it's just like, this is not the gritty, like, insanity mask that I know. This mask is just fucking with people. Like, it doesn't even have an agenda anymore. It's what it felt like near the end. Then again, there are four volumes of this, and I've only read the first one. I think I'm going to give the second volume a chance. You know, I'm still interested in the story enough to keep reading it. But I just thought that, that particular part at the end was kind of stupid. Because the mask is just just purposely fucking with his people to get them to take off the mask. Which, I'm just like, why would the mask want him to take it off? That, like, Because the whole time so everyone else is wearing the mask, like, the mask is influencing them towards certain actions. To Because, like, so you think it has an agenda to do something. And then, near the end, it just randomly takes this U-turn. And it's like, oh, actually, I just want to fuck with this dude while he's wearing me, so... I'm gonna ruin his guitar gig and embarrass him in front of a bunch of people. And I'm just like... It would be really cool if we saw, like, some sort of ancient spirit possessing the mask's backstory. And, like, we got to know a little bit more of the spirit behind the mask or... Because it's obviously sentient. If we got to know a little bit more about the spirit behind the mask and, like, what it thought and its mentality and stuff... I would definitely probably like, I would probably like those scenes a lot more because then that mask's actions would make sense. But for now, it seems a little weird. Anyway, that's my, uh, the mask omnibus review. I, overall, I'd give this like, 
probably a 7.5 out of 10, maybe an 8. I really liked it because I, I just always loved The Mask as, as a show, so, uh, sorry, as a movie. So maybe I'm looking at it through rose-tinted glasses. But up until the, up until the arc with the, the four friends getting the mask, I thought it was really, really good. And then right when that arc was like, meh. It would be a 10 out of 10 if it weren't for that personally. But anyway, see ya.